guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 16. So much went down in this episode, it was completely action-packed. So much happening with Godspeed, Diggle was in this episode, and it teased so much to do with him becoming Green Lantern, potentially. Also, we had the return of Nora, we had Bart Allen introduced, which, oh my god, we have to freak out about, and we're gonna freak out about all of this. But also Iris, like what is going on with Iris? So that's just a little teaser of some of the stuff we're going to be talking about in this video. So please be sure to stick around for the whole video. And if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. And subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so I'm going to have my trailer breakdown out for the 150th episode out later today. So stick around for that. You're not going to want to miss that. Jay Garrick is back. We've got Bart Allen. We've got Nora facing off against the Godspeeds. It's going down and I can't wait. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started about this episode. Like obviously we have the big stuff we want to talk about and we'll talk about them in a minute but at least at the start I want to start going chronologically. So the episode begins as Nora returns again, however it's not the real Nora until the end of the episode, it's again inside Barry's head and so he feels that something is definitely off because he keeps on getting the same dream with Nora appearing. And so in his dream, Nora says the future has changed and Barry needs to do something. So basically throughout this whole episode, Barry has extreme anxiety about what's happening with the future and if Godspeed being here has affected anything. And it seems like possibly there is some changes, however for now, it seems okay. Okay, let's continue from there. Godspeeds are back and they are attacking people all around the city. The Flash just got ambushed. Iris is apparently still homesick, again, don't know if that was just Candace being away, I presume. Obviously, her scenes later in this episode were shot at a later time, like after they finished most of the episode and then like Candace was available after her quarantine, because you have to quarantine when you go back to Canada and Candace had a break when she went back to America. But anyway, they come up with a solution by saying she's sick, but it's something bigger than that. And we'll skip to that in just a moment. But for now, let's go on with this. So the original six Godspeeds want his speed. We know that Team Flash are trying to figure out what the hell is going on and why there is this Godspeed war going on. But at the same time, we have Joe and Kramer with their storyline. So they're after Adam. And so Adam is basically a full-on psycho. And Joe and Kramer did survive the car explosion as we all expected. But Barry thinks that Nora doesn't exist anymore. And so he's very confused by this all, and this is where John Diggle returns, and it's so good to have John Diggle back. It's really great to see David Ramsey back on screen. Obviously, he was in those episodes with Batwoman and Legends. Legends wasn't connected. Batwoman, he was in, like, a brief appearance, but this was, like, his first big episode, and it was linking to his Batwoman appearance with his ongoing headaches, which definitely come to a big climax in this episode so it's great to have John back Oliver Queen is mentioned as he is Oliver Queen's right hand man Chester says really really love that I just like any reference of Oliver or like any past characters it's always great and so Diggle apparently volunteered to come to Central City himself to try and help out Team Flash and he comes with a device which is called an entropy trap and so Barry wants to bring one of the Godspeeds to Star Labs and they're going to use that device. But before we move on to them actually trapping one of the Godspeed clones, we have Ultraviolet who is unmasked and she's had her surgery, it's successful. And this leads into what happens later in the episode where she's actually killed. And again, not very interesting, so we're not going to fully go into this. But she ends up dying and it's a bit anticlimactic, like, okay, sure, she just died, like... Yeah, I guess we don't really mind because the show hasn't really made us care about Ultraviolet or Allegra and so I feel like a lot of us are disconnected from that storyline. So that was like the one part of the episode that didn't hit, but anyway, let's move on from this. So the Godspeed clone, they trap one of them using Diggle's device and it's a really cool scene as the Godspeed chases Barry throughout the streets and then he hits the trap. Godspeed is stuck and you have Diggle who comes out and he's in his full Spartan outfit with the Flash. I thought that was awesome because it's just great to see him fully suited up and back as Spartan. And it was cool how Barry had this like connection to his like earpiece and he was able to utilize Godspeed's energy signal luring in the other Godspeeds and so that's how they took them down. And so apparently 
Diggle knows and Argus knows all about Team Flash and everything that's happening. So he knows that Cecile has powered up and so is Allegra. And I guess that's just kind of like an acknowledgement that they are more powerful now. But it's pretty obvious that Argus would know all of that. Anyway, so the Godspeed starts talking and he says, we have much to discuss Barry Allen. And this point I was like, oh my God. Like it kind of scared me, I'm not gonna lie. It was just completely out of nowhere. We all thought he was like one of those modem godspeeds who couldn't talk, but it turns out he was listening this whole time. And so he reveals a lot of stuff here. So he says, we did not ask to be born and also nor did the rest of his godspeed team and they just want to be free. So that is the new godspeeds who came in to tackle the other godspeeds last episode and that's part of his team. But the others, the original Godspeed clones, were created and served their master, August Hart, from the future to get Barry's speed and all the speeds of speed. And they want infinite velocity and that is their job to get it for their master. However, this other team is against them because they are broken off. So it's kind of like a time remnant situation with Barry and future Barry with Savitar. And you have these two opposing people wanting very different things, although being the same person. And so it's revealed Godspeed is from the future, that's been confirmed, and they call the real August Heart, they call him Prime August Heart, and he is in our time. So I thought that was very interesting, and I wonder if, like, the real Godspeed, like, the one master in the future, is he going to be much older, or is he going to be this August Heart, who has just time-traveled? So that was, like, a major scene, that revealed a whole lot and it was a really really great scene and I just love the way that the Godspeed suddenly out of nowhere started talking, it was very chilling. And so it turns out he was obviously interrogating them and Barry wasn't asking Godspeed anything really because he was just there monitoring the situation and so Barry is super stressed out about Nora, he even shouts at Chester which he later apologises for, however he is worried if Nora is still alive in the future, then you have this great talk between Diggle and Barry and Diggle reveals he would risk everything to protect his family and suggests that Barry does the same and goes to the future because it's what is right in his heart. And so this scene was just so good and it really reminded me how much I miss Diggle and how much of a great character he is. So anything with Diggle is just fantastic, like I want a Diggle show especially with the Green Lantern stuff they are teasing and we're gonna go on to that right now and so this is where Diggle gets his terrible headaches again but it's tenfold it's absolutely terrible like he is going all over the place and Cecile is able to read inside his mind and she says it feels infinite and now obviously that is a very obvious reference to Crisis on Infinite Earths and what happened with Diggle at the end of Arrow with him finding the green kind of case and since then he's been having these headaches and with Cecile talking about like how it felt infinite that means that there is a lot more going on than meets the eye although it is pretty obvious as of right now that John is slowly becoming or needs to accept his greater role in the Arrowverse and I think with all of this and I'm gonna get on to what happens to Diggle because he does get another headache episode later in the episode but I'm pretty sure it's leading up to him becoming Green Lantern and he's going to have a big role in future crossovers. Also, I think maybe this is to do with the Flash's season 8 crossover at the start of the season with the five episodes. I think Diggle might be returning. And so you have Diggle versus Godspeed and he's like, these are nanites, courtesy of Ray Palmer. And I laughed out loud. I don't think I've laughed out that loud in a long time. It's just the best meme from the Arrowverse and I love that they did it. However, at this point Diggle has another headache episode and there is a voice overlay and I don't know whose voice it is, but it said, and at 100% it did say this, worlds await. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So there is someone with inside his mind. I don't know if it's the monitor. I don't know if it's anyone else. However, it seems Diggle is being called to do something greater and now he is only acknowledging this and this is what he does at the end of the episode where you get the flashback to how he ended Arrow with the green light soaking in on his face as he opens the box which is supposedly a green lantern ring 
and so he's put this off for far too long and he is going to sort this out and that's going to lead into like the Supergirl episode and the Superman Lois episode which are supposedly connected to this and I'm sure it will be in some way so we'll have to wait and see if we get a continuation of that but I do think with them teasing that his headaches felt infinite and with worlds awaiting I've got a very strong feeling that John Diggle might be the first person to discover the rest of the multiverse which is believed to be dead as of right now in the Arrowverse but obviously we know that it exists but the characters don't so I think that is how Diggle fits into all of this and I presume he's going to become Green Lantern because that's definitely what they're teasing. Okay, so I loved all the Diggle scenes and that pretty much covers his stuff throughout this episode. So let's move on from that and let's head back to Cecile who has been reading through Nora's journal. Iris has apparently been looking through it and has been researching. I don't know how the kind of timeline matches up with her being with Dion but also being researching all of this stuff. However, that doesn't matter at the end of the day because it's just kind of like a thing so that they can propel the narrative forward and Cecile, Diggle and supposedly Allegra are going to be looking for the real August heart and that's where they head off to. And it's at this point that Barry prepares to run to the future to 2049 to try and check up on Nora because he's taken on Diggle's advice. And so Barry's about to run to the future However, as he runs into the Speed Force, he is blocked by six God Speeds, the original six God Speeds from time traveling. And that was completely unexpected. It came out of absolutely nowhere. I had no idea that the God Speeds would be in the Speed Force, but now I think of it, it makes a lot of sense because they've been siphoning the Speed Force. That's where they've been going. And then they come back and they've been coming back much faster because they are using up more of the Speed Force and obviously there is a lot more to be gotten in Central City. And so he's kicked out the Speed Force and he lands in a timeline with Dion. I knew Dion was gonna be in this episode, so it wasn't that much of a surprise to me. However, the way it happened was a surprise because I was not expecting Iris to be there. Like what? Iris is there and she has been not sick, but she's been moving in and out of the timeline. Like what the hell is going on with her? I presume it has something to do with Nora and Bart, with them showing up at the end of the episode, which we'll get to in just a minute because I know all of you guys want to hear me talk about that. However, Iris is being moved in and out of the timeline. I think that is because she's supposed to be pregnant soon and somehow there is something messing up with the future as Barry has been teasing throughout this whole episode. So I think that's why Iris has been like phasing out and without Dion's help, I think she might be erased from existence and it may put the West Allen children in jeopardy. So, wow, I had no idea anything like this was going to happen to Iris, but it was a great twist. And like I said, there's so many twists throughout this episode. It was twist galore and I will take that. I love that. Let's go back to August Hart, who doesn't know who he is. Cecile and Diggle find him and they take him back to Star Labs. And August is just normal as of right now and August reacts to the injection that Caitlin gives him and he remembers his name so it turns out he's the real Godspeed. Nothing too special in that scene because we knew he was the real Godspeed anyway because it was pretty obvious. However, it's cool that this is Godspeed before he became Godspeed. So maybe they have the chance to defeat the future version of himself by using Prime August Heart. And so something to do with the Joe and Kramer storyline, apparently Kristen Kramer died in that explosion. And so who is she? That wasn't answered in the episode, but that is a big question mark that was left at the end of this story this episode. Also, it's revealed that Adam is somehow immortal. I would presume he is a meta as well. However, Chris and Kramer's dead. What? So that is crazy. That's just like one other thing to add on to this crazy episode. However, let's move on to the next thing. And we have a little prep talk between Cecile, who is trying to amp up Barry. And this is just before Nora West Allen returns. What? So we were expecting them to come next episode because the next episode is the 150th episode which we're going to be breaking down the trailer for later today so stick around for that as I said earlier. However, Nora returns and I guess I was kind of expecting it and it wasn't like a huge surprise because they do tend to like to bring like big cliffhangers to what's going to happen next episode. Obviously it sets it up so that's super exciting. 
However, she does return and her lightning is only purple now. That must be said and that must be noted. I think I'm gonna make an extra video on this sometime in the next few days to try and explain what's happening with her lightning. Why is it fully purple now? Because I think I have a lot of theories about that and I'm sure you guys do. Also, if you have any theories, please be sure to comment them on the community tab. There is a new post up and we can answer all of your questions and theories about all the twists and turns in tonight's episode to do with Diggle, to do with Nora, to do with Bart Allen and everything else. Okay, so Nora is back and she hugs Barry. It's a nice reunion. I love that character. I love Nora. So it's really nice to see her back and she's very quirky as usual. And she reveals that she has a brother and Barry was in complete shock. And so out of nowhere, Bart Allen appears and he makes his first appearance. It's awesome. And he's like, this place is crash. He is very quirky, it seems like, and he is kind of like Bart Allen in Young Justice or in the comics. However, maybe it's a bit over the top, like with him just like crashing around all over the place, like hitting Nora and being like, this is crash. However, I'm super excited that Bart Allen is here and I think he's gonna play a big, big role in the next couple of episodes. So look forward to all of that. Obviously, we're gonna be talking more about Bart and Nora over the next few days with our upcoming videos, including the trailer breakdown later tonight. And as well, the next few days, we're gonna have some bonus videos talking about the theories about what went down in this episode because there was so much that happened. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this review, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, Turn on notifications if you're new to not miss any daily videos. Also, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.